Welcome into the Mid-Norfolk Garden once again. This is one of my favourite views at this time of year. Looking over the old orchard with the daffodils flowering really at their very best. In the corner we've got a uh, semi-wild area, again filled with wildflowers and cottage garden plants. And then you come down along this little path that winds its way round the old orchard with views back over the uh, flowering daffodils. This time of year we've got some uh, flower coming on the trees already. Just look at this little apple tree. It's been struggling in this rather hard soil for some time now, but it is actually getting going. Blossoms just showing some colour. It won't be long before that's out fully, which is exceptionally early for us, even here in uh, Norfolk. The old apple tree had a lovely big American pillar rose for many years, but it died two years ago and had to be removed. But that's uh, let more light into the canopy underneath it and these primroses and bulbs are doing far better as a result, I feel. We have replanted the rose, having said that. The native daffodil seeds into this grass. You can see here lots of young plants take about four or five years to grow to flowering size, so you have to have a degree of patience. The hybrid larger variety daffodils will not seed successfully, so we deadhead those. Pear blossoms giving us a beautiful display this year. Just look at this tree, absolute beautiful display. It's worth growing pears just for the blossom, I feel. And this is a quince tree, flowers in about a month's time. No uh, blossom yet showing on that, but it's a lovely big flower when it does come out. My three big pink rhododendrons are doing their thing flower a couple of weeks before the, the rest of the planting along here. Didn't actually know that when we did the planting. They've taken a long time to get going, but look at these bluebells. This is going to be a fantastic display. Hybridised and spread out just naturally in this uh, moist soil and the white frittle areas planted from uh, bulbs last year and in the green and the native wild frittle area with that lovely mottled pattern on them. Interplanted with uh, giant snowflakes and daffodils in this uh, very moist bit of soil. They do really well. It's uh, a lovely time of year. My iris border, new round planting, was sitting under water for most of March. Dried out now and uh, up this uh, little path that we keep bulb free so we can mow some paths through this orchard more daffodils and looking back towards the boundary the trees are just starting to break leaf here i've got a lot of damage from deer coming into the garden i don't mind them it grow enough for the deer to have their uh, pick of my hyacinths but this border should be a mass of blue hyacinths as well as these little muscari and the underplanting of uh, yellow and pink primrose Gives a beautiful display most years, but alternately, all we get is this when the deer have been in and eaten the main flowers of the hyacinths. In the long border, just to the back of the new quadrant garden, we've got a planting of uh, self seeded um, little uh, flowers here, and look at these uh, primrose coming in. Forget me not, sorry, had a blank moment there. The overspill of the uh, irises we've planted into this new area of gravel long border it should give us a view up to the new planting uh, just behind that white chair in the uh, the distance and then behind that we've got a fantastic display just starting on the azaleas she's enjoying a little trog around the garden this is the new iris border and just look at the pop of lime green in the distance behind the black fence there's my three rows of uh, irises nicely growing on. Whether they'll flower this year or have to be patient, we'll find out later in the summer. These uh, plantings in the gravel are doing quite well this year, but these muscari have struggled. Again, they've mainly been eaten by the deer. They should be much more confluent than that. These euphorbias will just start picking up the colour on this lime green philadelphus that just pops in the distance and above it coming out very early again a flowering prunus in this uh, dark pink usually gives us a fantastic display in front of the old farmhouse. This border in about a month's time is going to be red with that flowering and uh, leaves of the smoke bush and then the azaleas behind the rhododendrons are just going to burst out and usually give us a profusion of colour. 
Um, by that time, these daffs will have gone underground. Agapanthus in front of the house and acanthus coming up with uh, above it a dual planting of roses, uh, a tall variety and then a, a shorter climbing rose to give you that sort of quenchal flower. And also to cover, you can see we haven't planted one on this uh, aspect and you've got the very bare stems. By the old uh, Victorian summer house this uh, wisteria is looking really, really promising. I'm very pleased with the result of the lovely little side bracts that are absolutely awash with uh, flower bud just starting in. The old side border, always a little mean this one but it's uh, been a blast of colour earlier with uh, spring bulbs and crocus and then on this back bank this time we've got this absolutely wonderful, just look at that, fantastic little white flowers just trickling down doing their thing, absolutely beautiful. And then to the side, a rhododendron, variegated and struggling a little bit with a lack of light and dryness under the beech tree above it, but starting to get its feet down now. And uh, it's been a very good year for those with the moisture that we've had. Although we've complained about it, just look at these bulbs. They've absolutely loved the, uh, the conditions we've had here. And we certainly haven't had to do too much in the way of watering. But equally, we haven't got on and done any feeding either. Just look at this daffodil, absolutely gorgeous colour combination, pure white and then that apricot centre. The new quadrant garden that we formed on the old swimming pool site is really getting going now. It's been in place now for almost two years and a lot of these roses are really getting their feet down and should give us a fantastic display. This border as well was newly created as part of the barn conversion we did here and filled it with uh, both tulips and daffodils. We tend to plant out the daffs that we've grown the season before in pots into rows for cutting. On the north face is my collection of hostas in pots that are just starting into growth. We've done a video that we're halfway through on uh, what you should be doing to care for those at this time of year to get them into flower and leaf. And then the old, old vegetable garden here has been uh, used to plant out rows of plants that have moved to part of the building project. So daylilies mainly, but uh, we've also got some self-seeded foxglove and uh, hollyhocks coming on in here. And again, more iris. I've got more iris than we know what to do with. The old part of the garden looking towards the new vegetable garden and paddocks beyond with the pig shelters in the distance. Lovely plantings here. This is a wild part of the garden with some honesty and some more primrose and then planted bulbs. It's had a bit of a seeing too with the builders putting pipeworks through this area. So we're going to thicken up the bulbs here over the next 12 months, hopefully get it back into some condition. The pond's higher than it's been for four years, partly because we're bringing all the surface water from those barns down into it, but it's just been a wet year generally. Irises getting going on the far bank, flag irises and the water lilies already starting into growth. But it's still very wet and boggy down in this area of the garden. Just look at this little wren's nest taking its opportunity on not much activity down here and built a massive nest for such a tiny bird. Rhubarb still coming under these forces very well. And uh, we've got a lot of work to do on this uh, new vegetable garden this year. Thanks for watching.